Welcome to Sageland Inspiration's tutorial for needle felting mini roses. Please watch the entire video before you get started to get you an idea of what your project will be like. First, let's start with some needle felting tips. Use a short, shallow stabbing motion to needle felt your wool. Your needle should not go very deep into your piece. Keeping your elbow tight to your side can be helpful in avoiding an exaggerated motion that will only cause your project to take much more time and effort. Whatever you do, don't bend your needle. You can poke your piece from any angle, but be sure to keep your needle straight to avoid breakage. Poking in the direction of the fibers will help you create a smoother finish and avoid an overly fuzzy appearance. Remember, when making shapes, your final shape will shrink. If you're unsure of how much wool to begin with, always start with less. It's much easier to add wool to your piece than it is to remove excess wool. The more you poke at the fibers, the firmer and more felted they will become. Use your poke sparingly at first to get a feel for how the wool reacts and keep from over felting areas, but keep in mind that the biggest beginner mistake is not poking enough. Always, always use a felting pad to keep from poking yourself while working. Hold your piece in a way that allows you to see your fingers and the needle. Working slowly at first will help minimize self-poking as you get a feel for the art. Always remember to stop poking before looking up from your project. To begin our project, we want to separate some wool. The wool fibers separate very easily. Grasp the wool in one hand and with the other, gently pull to remove fibers. If you're finding that the wool doesn't separate easily, simply widen your grasp, grab the end again, and gently pull. It should come apart without too much trouble. Since we are looking for a very small amount, Pinching it is easiest at this point. You want to end up with a small wisp like this. Keep your wisp of wool even and kind of fold it in half. Fold it in half again to make some sort of little roll like I have here. It's not too specific. Place your cookie cutter flat on the needle felting pad. Push your little roll of wool evenly into the cookie cutter. The wool will be trying to come back up out of the cookie cutter, so start poking it towards the top of the heart and all over the surface. You want to work your needle gently over the surface and around the edges while it's inside of the cookie cutter without over felting. Just like this until the wool is flat but not felted completely. Once you have those surface fibers under control, Pull off your cookie cutter and take a look at your heart shape. This is pretty good to start with. This is a great time to pull your heart up off the felting pad and flip it over. If you find you lose your heart shape completely when you do this, you can put it back in the cookie cutter and work on it some more. Softly poke the surface of your heart starting at the top. You want to make the top edge fairly flat, but don't poke too deeply. Focus mainly on the top edge of your heart as this will be the petals of your rose. You don't want to worry too much about the bottom and you can refine the edges some, but they will fuse your petals together. Be sure you're pulling up your project and flipping it over and working both sides. If you'd like a deeper indent in the top of the heart, i.e. the petals, you can work on that as well. You can see in the pictures that this heart isn't too fully felted. Here you can tell that I've left the bottom fairly untouched. Continue working the surface of the heart and the edges until you're satisfied. You should have something like this. I know it seems fairly crude at this point, but it will be perfect. You can trim the top edges if they're a little bit too fuzzy for you right now. You will want to make four of these little hearts for your mini rows. To begin assembling your rows, slightly overlap one petal on top of the other. Use your needle to felt the overlap and create a join between the two petals. Add the remaining petals in the same manner, being sure to flip your work and work on the back side as well. You should come up with something that looks similar to this. To create the rows, we are going to begin rolling the shape. Tightly roll the first petal and hold in place. You'll want to poke at this little petal to get it to hold because that will be the center of your rose. 
It should look something like this once you've got that pinned down. Continue rolling up the rest of the petals of your rose. When you have one petal left to roll up, this is a good time to secure your work. Use your needle to make several pokes to hold everything in place. Now pull that final petal around and secure it to your little rosebud. Look at that. What a cute little rose. If you like the look of your rose at this point, you can call it finished. If you'd like to continue working on it, you can use your needle to push down some of the petals and make it look better. Use a pair of shears to snip off any unwanted fibers. Felt the bottom of your rose to finish it off. And there you have it, a beautiful little mini rose. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from Sageland Inspirations. Please visit sagelandinspirations.com for more art kits, DIYs, and fantastic fiber arts.